Hello students and welcome to episode 49 of the online lesson and today we are going to be talking about uh, artwork and actually you know I always have these ukiyo-e paintings in the back and one of them is missing right now and there's a reason why it's because um, I was on the uh, Japan Times website looking at news articles and I came across a news article about something called Shin Hanga and a man named uh, Shoza Budo Watanabe. And uh, I, looked, I looked up what is Shin Hanga because uh, the picture on the Japan Times website looked like ukiyo-e. So I looked it up and apparently it was like a new style of ukiyo-e that came about in the early 20th century. I went on Wikipedia and I looked at some Shin Hanga examples and I found this one which is always hanging up in my room right there. This is not old ukiyo-e art. It's kind of new ukiyo-e art and it's called Shin Hanga. And uh, yeah, this was one of the people I'm going to talk about. I think Hasui Kawa Kawase, uh, who is kind of a Shin Hanga ukiyo-e artist uh, who worked for Watanabe's company. Yeah, he made this one. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool and I wanted to research more and I wanted to talk about it because yeah if you notice this is kind of like a more modern style ukiyo-e it looks has more detail has better kind of art techniques than the traditional ones like uh, you know Kiroshige or Utamaru or something and uh, yeah it's pretty cool I was pretty excited to see that it's uh, I can learn more about uh, Japanese culture and I want to teach you guys more about Japanese culture because as I was researching I noticed Shin Hanga was not very popular in Japan it was more popular in America and these days it's coming back to being popular in Japan but uh, I'll explain that in the article so let's start reading uh, this week, uh, we are going to look at a story that was posted on the Japan Times website about an art form called Shin Hanga, which literally translates to new prints. It was an art movement in early 20th century Japan during the Taisho and Showa periods that revitalized the traditional ukiyo-e art, which focused on the Edo and Meiji periods, 17th and through the 19th century. Shin Hanga maintained the traditional ukiyo-e collaborative system where the artist, carver, printer, and publisher engaged in divisions of labor as opposed to the Sosaku Hanga, which means creative prints movement, which was all about the individual doing all the parts of the artwork by themselves. The movement was initiated and nurtured by publisher Watanabe Shozaburo and flourished from around 1915 to 1942, resuming on a smaller scale after the Second World War through the 1950s and 60s. Inspired by European Impressionism, the artists incorporated Western elements such as the effects of light, and the expression of individual moods, but focused on strictly traditional themes of landscapes, famous places, beautiful women, kabuki actors, and birds and flowers. Watanabe Shoza Budo was not an artist, but took an interest in art in his teens and apprenticed with an art dealer and developed a passion for ukiyo-e. By the time he launched his own company in 1906, ukiyo-e was out of fashion and lost a lot of popularity. That didn't bother Watanabe, and he established a Society for Ukiyo-e Research, where he published high-quality reproductions by Utagawa Hiroshige, Kitagawa Utamaro, and other acknowledged masters. He was also constantly looking for new collaborators and artists who shared his vision. He attracted many artists such as Shinsui Ito, Hasui Kawase, Shunsei Natori, and Kotondo Tori, 
With them, he launched the last significant woodblock print movement called Shinhanga. Over the next several decades, very few people in Japan noticed the artwork that was being produced by these men. The Japanese public was interested in different things. Most art collectors in the 1910s and 20s were interested in avant-garde artwork from Paris, which was the capital of the art world at that time. Others were interested in Sosakuhanga because it was more creative and copied fresh new ideas from European artists. Watanabe was not so interested in that. He wanted what he wanted to do was preserve the ukiyo-e tradition and build on it. So he decided not to try to make his shinhanga pieces famous for Japanese people, but for foreigners. He started selling his pieces to foreigners living in Japan. Then he began working with dealers overseas to expand his business abroad. By the beginning of the 1920s, he was selling pieces of Shinhanga at American auction houses. Watanabe was not the only publisher of Shinhanga, but he was the driving force behind the movement. He shaped the style and the methods of creating Shinhanga, and he also coined the name. Up to a third of all the Shinhanga ever produced were produced by his company, which shows how successful he was with his vision. It wasn't always easy though, and he lost everything he had twice. The first time was during the 1923 Great Kanto earthquake, but he quickly recovered from that and continued his success. The second time was due to the firebombing of Tokyo in World War II from which he never uh, from which he couldn't recover by the end of world war ii japan had changed and shinhanga had fallen out of fashion but for two decades in the early 20th century watanabe successfully brought new life into an old art medium and revitalized interest in ukiyo-e and therefore japanese culture all around the world all right, that's it for Shinhanga and Watanabe. Let's move on to our vocabulary. We have five words today. Our first word is revitalized. Revitalized means to give something with new life and vitality. To give something with new life and vitality. Our second word is collaborative. Produced by or involving two or more parties working together. So uh, in the ukiyo-e, in Shinhanga, the printer, the producer, the painter, the carver all worked together to create. It was a collaborative project. The next word is neutered, or sorry, nurtured. To care for and protect someone or something while they are growing. In this case, it's something. Watanabe nurtured, he cared for, he protected the Shinhanga art style while it was growing in the 1910s and 20s. And the next word is flourished. Develop rapidly and successfully. Uh, talking about the Shinhanga artwork, uh, it flourished in the 1920s and 30s. Next is driving force. This means the power or energy behind something in motion. So Mr. Wat Watanabe was the driving, driving force of the Shinhanga art movement. All right, and we also have five comprehend, uh, sorry, five discussion questions, and we'll talk about these uh, the next time we meet. So um, please, uh, try to write down or think about your answers. But these five questions talk about artwork. So, number one, what kind of artwork do you like? What artists or pieces of art do you recommend? Number two, have you ever heard of these types of art? Ukiyo-e, Shinhanga, Sosakuhanga? 
Uh, I asked my wife this question and she said she had never heard of Shinhanga or So Sakuhanga. Number three, please look up some of the artists and pieces of art from the Shinhanga genre and give your impressions or opinions about them. So I want to talk about this piece. I'll do it after I read all the discussion questions. Number four, have you ever made any artwork before? What did you make? Remember, artwork does, doesn't just have to be a picture or a painting. It could be photography, dance, music. Uh, it could be, um, yeah, sculpting, uh, pottery. Uh, there are many different types of art. So have you ever made any artwork before? And what did you make? Finally, do you like visiting museums? And what kind of muse museums do you like to go to? Okay, and I'm going to answer one of the questions and coming back to this piece. Um, let me find the, let me find the, uh, the artist's name. I saw it on the internet when I looked at Shinhanga on Wikipedia and it gave me the name of this artist. Ah, yeah, I was right. It's Kawase, uh, Kawase Hasui. And this piece is called Shiba Zojoji, which looks like a Buddhist temple in Tokyo, Japan. I think this is close to the like Asakusa. Yeah, I think so. Anyway, this is called Shiba jo Zojoji by Kawase Hasui. I actually bought this in an ukiyo-e shop in uh, Asakusa in front of the uh, Kaminarimon. You know, there's like a small street of many different sort of omiyage, like souvenir st stores. And there's an ukiyo -e shop that had this. And it has the kind of same architecture and same design as the temple in Asakusa, uh, Sengen Jinja. So I thought it maybe was a woman uh, walking through Sengen Jinja in the wintertime. But if this is called Shiba Zo Zojoji, I think I think maybe it's a different temple, perhaps. Um, anyway, I just love how the woman is walking in the it looks like a strong, strong wind is blowing. It must be so cold. And the snow is falling. The snow makes the branches of the tree heavy and it's sitting on the top of the temple and on the ground. Uh, it gives you a sense of the cold winter time and the kind of difficulty it is to walk through the, uh, the wintry streets in the snow with the wind blowing. And it really reminds me of my experience when I first came to Japan and I lived in uh, Totori. And I moved there in December, right uh, in the heart of winter. And it was snowing so hard and I had to walk to work or ride my bicycle to work in the snow. And it was just a really new experience coming from California. Uh, it was such a different experience for me. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't like it very much, but I did my best and I survived. And so when I look at this painting of the woman surviving in the snow, going to the temple, it helps me remember the difficult times that I had when I first lived in Totori. All right, you guys, thank you so much for listening. Uh, I know this subject was about Japanese culture, but I thought it was interesting because it wasn't famous in Japan. It became famous in America and then maybe it was famous in Japan after. So I thought we could learn something new about Mr. Watanabe and about Shin Hanga. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson today. I'm looking forward to talking about it with everyone. And um, yeah, that's it for today's class. I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye, everyone. See you.